everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about chapters 1 to 11 of Do Androids Dream of Electric Cheap by Philip K. Dick. So if you don't know already, I'm running a read-along for this book. I'll leave the introduction video, whatever you call it, video around here somewhere. We were supposed to have read this by yesterday, but my camera... I'm, I've got a new light and I'm trying to figure out how everything works and yesterday which was the 2nd of February, it was just all going Pete Tong. So, alas, we're filming again on the 3rd. Aside from that, I'm gonna stop moaning and just get on with it. So, The Android's Dream of Electric Sheep is a sci-fi novel. Obviously, if you've read it, you will know. And it did become Blade Runner, the film. There's been two Blade Runner films, which I didn't know about. So there's been one that's released recently and one that was, was like, well old, so yeah. I don't know why it's called Blade Runner or not, do Android stream with electric sheep, but today, what ends? I'm going to talk a bit about the main premise these first, and then I'll talk about the plot, and then I'll talk about some themes that I find interesting. I'm going to put this down because I, I don't like holding it, it's doing my arm an ache. In Do Android Stream of Electric Sheep, most humans have just said bye bye to the earth because there's been a war, a world war called World War Terminus. And there's this horrible dust that's been left over from the war. It's not really explained why. It's not very clear why the dust exists, but it seems like something to do with decay or maybe the bombing of like society is just kind of, you know, got all this dust out of the buildings. I don't know. I don't know. And lots of humans have died because of this dust. Loads of animals have gone extinct, like owls have gone extinct because of this horrible dust. It's just killing people. And the humans that are left on Earth are also kind of are being really negatively affected by this dust as well in terms of their health. So after this war, most of the humans just fled and they went to Mars. They're like, see you later, Earth, bye. But some people stayed. Some people stayed on Earth and it doesn't look at the moment too different from uh, an earth that we have at the moment. There are obviously lots of abandoned buildings and stuff like that but people still work, people still have jobs and another thing I should also note is that there are loads of androids hence the title do androids blah 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 blah. There's a lot of androids in it and these are both humans and animals, can't remember I already said that and humanoids, or human androids as they're called, Andes is another word. It took me a while to realise what Andes meant. They're built both on Mars and on Earth, and the people, well, one of the main companies that build them on Earth is called the Rosen Institute. No, it's not. The Rosen Association. And some people are bounty hunters, and they retire, it's called retire, basically kill um, these androids. And... I don't really know why, I'm very confused in why they're building these androids but then bounty hunters get paid to kill them. I'm just not very sure why go on there. I don't know if it's like naughty androids get retired. I don't know man, I don't understand. Maybe it'll be explained more, maybe I'm just dumb and didn't realise. So the main character Rick has an android sheep but you can't tell it's an android sheep from the outside. And for some reason it's very rude to ask, oh, do you have an android animal or a real animal? I don't know why that's rude, but it just is apparently. Like I said, androids, you can't really tell them apart from real things, from real, what they're trying to represent. So to differentiate from humans, androids are given an empathy test and it's called, well, I believe this is how it's pronounced, Voigtkampf, <laughs> the Voigtkampf test. And this is based mostly on animal questions as well. So animals, for some reason, they have a big dominance in this society. Don't know why? Maybe we'll find out in the second half. So I mentioned Rick. Rick is one of the main characters, Rick Deckard. He works for the police as such, and he is a bounty hunter. And uh, an interesting thing, um, his superior is shot down by an android, so he's recovering. His name's Dave, classic, classic name, Dave. Uh, I believe it's Dave. And he is, well, like I said, Rick's superior, so when he does get shot, Rick takes over his job. And one of his jobs is to test the empathy test, test its reliability. So Rick goes off into his little, oh, there's hover cars in this, which is so cool. I mean, it's such a, I don't know if it's a cliche thing or if Philip K. Dick was like one of the first to come up with it. Anyway, that's probably a lie. But anyway, 
Rick goes in his little hover car and he goes to the Rosen Association, which, like I said, they build the Android, so it's a perfect place to test the empathy test. Um, and while he's there, he tests one of the founders, one of the people who runs the uh, Rosen Association, and she's called Rachel, Rachel Rosen. And he does the test on her, and he's like, yep, you're an Android. And then she and her uncle are like, um, no I'm not. And this whole debate of empathy and whether empathy is a human debate kind of blossoms out of this. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but I will in part two. But then we find out that she was lying very soon after. I don't really know why. I'm just very confused. I think it's because the Rosen Association are obviously building these androids, so why would they want them to be killed? I don't know, I'm just so confused. Anyway, that's what happens. So Rick realises the empathy test is all good, even though that's so unscientific, using only one participant. But anyway, he's like, yeah, that'll do. And then he goes off and hunts for more androids. So the first android he hunts for is Polikov, and that's the one who shot his superior Dave. And he meets him, Polikov tries to kill him or badly damage him. And then Rick's like, nope, beep, and then retires Polikov. He then tries and finds an opera singer who is said to be an android, and her name is Luba Loft. Now, she's not really having any of it. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about because she's German. No, that's that, that sounded really racist. What I mean is, she has a perfect English accent, but she still doesn't know a lot of the English language, which I don't blame her because it's like so big. So she doesn't understand a lot of the questions. And then she starts to become suspicious and she calls the police. And then the police come in. Officer Crams comes in. And then there's lots of confusion because Officer Crams is like, I know all the bounty hunters. And then Rick is like, well, I don't know who you are. And then, oh, it all escalates, and Rick's arrested because they find Polakov, a dead body, in the back of his car, and right, no, 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 we're taking you back to the police station. And then he realises the police station is not the police station he knows. It's a completely different police station. So he's in the police station. He gets greeted by the main man, whose name is Garland, and he's like, right, Wagwan here, what are you doing? And uh, Rick's like, oh, I can't believe the damn having, man. Um, I just retired this android called Polakov, and they're like, huh, yeah, good one, that's not an android. But they give it a bone, but they give it a bone marrow test and find out that it is an android, so they're like, oh, okay, you're not that bad then. But then, I don't know how it descends into this. Garland thinks that Rick is an android at first, so he's like, right, we're gonna have to get an empathy test on you, mate. So he sends one of his bounty hunters, Resh, if that's how you pronounce it, don't know, Rek, I can't do German. I can't do German. So Rick goes and gets the little empathy test. And then Garland is just like, yo, everyone hits an android. Everyone in the police station's an android, welcome. And it just gets very odd. And he's like, oh yeah, Resh is an android as well. And then Resh comes back in with the empathy test. And then Garland is like this. And then Resh is like this. And Resh shoots Garland. And then he's dead. I'm like, whoa! Anyway, Resh is like, oh my god, I can't believe that happened. What happened when I was away? And then Rick was like, well, he just told me everyone's androids in here. And Rush is like, I always knew, I always knew, but Rush thinks that he's a human. And it's just, oh. So then they both fly away and they try and find Lube Loft, whatever her name is. And that's the end of their story. There's also another character who we follow briefly who's called Isidore. And he is a special, I hate that word, because he fails an IQ test so he's deemed special. If you're not special, you're just called a regular. So Rick is a regular. At least what we know so far. Isidore works as a vet for android pets. Yes, they have vets for android pets. And they're also dressed like proper vets. Like they have their little car, well, their little hover car, which is disguised as a proper vet's little hover car as well. Nothing really too interesting happens with him. The only interesting thing that happens is that, well, he lives, a bit of background, he lives in an abandoned apartment block thing. Flat block. Block of flats. And he hears the TV go on downstairs and he's like, hold on, no one's been in this building for years. So then he goes down because he's really excited, like, yes, a person. He's very lonely, he's very lonely. And then, oh, I'm going to talk about sexism a bit. Ugh. Then he finds out it's a lady who just has her boobs out for some reason, don't know why. And we find out it's Rachel Rosen. Whoa. 
He doesn't know the Rosen Association or anything about that, but yeah. That's where we left off then. So, themes. Whilst I was talking about it, let's talk about sexism and sexist language. Yeah, I don't know why Rachel just had no top on. I don't know why that's necessary to the plot. Maybe it will be necessary soon. But it's just, I, I don't really understand why you need to get your boobs out. It's just, if a woman was writing that, then she wouldn't have had the boobs out, really, would she? Another thing that really irks me with writing, and you get it a lot in academia as well, well, not nowadays, but back in the old days, when you would refer, no, not you, but when some certain people would refer to a human, doesn't have to be male or female, they would refer to it as he or him. Um, I'm terrible at giving examples, but say if you're talking about, I don't know, a human going to the supermarket to get some beans. In academia, I don't know why you'd be talking about that, maybe social psychology or something, you say, and then the human will go and get the beans and he will return. And it's like, no, 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 women exist! <sighs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, what, what am I trying to get to here? Um, he uses a lot of that language. So when he refers to a human, he refers to the human as he. And it's like, no. So, for example, with Isidore, when he realises there's someone down below, he immediately refers to the human or humanoid or whatever it is as he. No! Mm -hmm. Very infuriating. On a lighter note, something I found very interesting was emotions and the use of emotional regulation. So, in the opening scenes, we see Rick and his wife, Aran, using a mood organ. I don't know whether it's an actual organ, but you basically can change your emotions using this mood organ, which is pretty cool. So, Iran wants to feel despair. And Rick's like, why do you want to feel despair? That's a bit odd. The whole point in the mood organ is that you don't feel these negative things. And she says, oh yes, but you should feel despair every now and then. And I'm thinking, hmm, interesting. Do you think that's true? Do you feel like you need to feel despair? Because I think you do in order to develop your concepts of the world, to develop your attitudes and your opinions of what you think about lots of different things. For example, I'm not a big fan of Brexit, but I would not be as big of an unfan, that's not a word, but I'm going to pretend it is, if I didn't feel despair about it. If I didn't feel despair about Brexit, then surely I wouldn't, I would support it. Does that make sense? I don't know. I don't know. Also, something I think is interesting is, well, should we control every emotion? Is that necessary? So this mood organ, it seems that a lot of people use it a lot of the time. And I'm thinking, hmm, aren't emotions just reactions to the stimuli around us? Oftentimes they're not, but then that's when, you know, mental health problems arise and then you can get medication for that kind of thing. So, yeah, in, in my opinion, I don't think they necessarily should be. I think one big problem, which is kind of going off tangent a bit, is social media. For example, we're bombarded with people who are happy all the time, smiling in different places. Oh, look, I went to the Grand Canyon. I don't really care, to be honest. Oh, that's, that's mean. But the thing is, it's just not realistic. People are not happy all the time. I think most of the time people just kind of like, well, living again today, do, 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 do. they're not happy or sad, and the thing is we don't have a name for that emotion because, well, it's, it's not really an emotion, is it? But it is, it is, it just doesn't have a name. So there we go, emotions. Another thing I find interesting, I don't know why I'm losing my voice, I'm very sorry. I think it's because I'm getting asthma. Not I'm getting asthma, I have asthma, but I'm just like, don't have my inhalers very good. So I'm just kind of choking. Anyway, when Rick finds that an android is an android, he starts calling the android it, rather than using pronouns. Um, sorry I keep on touching here, I'm wearing a necklace and it's very fiddly, I'm not going to do that in future, did I just break it? No. Are humanoids it? So, if a humanoid looks like a human, behaves like a human, Say a lot of its organs work the same as a human's organs. Does that make it still an object? Just just pretend I didn't say it. Sir. Does that make the humanoid an object or a human being? What do you think? 
the thing is, there is no right or wrong answer. And something I find interesting as well. You can manipulate humanoids' minds, minds, I mean, it's obviously different to our kind of minds, but you can give it orders, say, do this, do that, do this, do that. So, if you're a fascist, for example, you could get all these humanoids, which look and sound like humans, the only way you'd be able to tell they're humanoids is through birth certificates, because humanoids would be born a different way than, you know, biological humans. So you'd find all these humanoids, group them together, and then you could say, Right, I'm going to tweak your brain just a little bit like this, so that you believe my political beliefs. And then you wouldn't be able... Just say you did this on the sly. No one else knew about it, apart from your government, apart from your party. And then it comes down to election day. And then all these humanoids would vote for you because you've manipulated them. And then, sooner rather than later, or maybe a bit later, I don't know, you have this society full of humanoids uh, who believe what you say, who aren't argumentative, and then you have all these humans which are like, what the hell, this is terrible. Humans are going to be redundant. And then what's going to happen to humans? The thing is, people are scared that robots are going to take over the world because they'll grow their own intelligence and consciousness. But I think they think of it the wrong way round. Humans will implement their beliefs onto humanoids. And then because the humans will have their own opinions, form their own opinions, and the humanoids would just do what they're told, I think humans, well, some humans would want to wipe the humans out. Or maybe even the humanoids would want to wipe the humans out. But it's because of the humans' fault in the first place. Yeah. Things. And also, if you can make a human or an animal that represents perfectly another animal or a human, does that mean you have become a god? in terms of religion, I think it's a very interesting concept as well. So there we go. Thank you for watching my discussion of part one of Philip K. Dick's Do Andrew's Dream of Electric Sheep. If you want to follow me for the second part, we'll be reading page... No, we won't be reading pages. We'll be reading chapters 12 to 22 for the 1st of March. What do you think about this book? I think it has lots of interesting philosophical concepts. Uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far, apart from like the horrible sexist tone to it. I don't think he's deliberately being sexist, it's just the language of his time. Um, but it is infuriating nonetheless, because you could just realise that it's a bit sexist and not use that language. Anyway, thank you for watching, let me know what you think down below, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!